Good morning and welcome to Squeeze Central. So I'm out here on a very, very humid morning um, and I just realized I probably should make a little video about what I'm doing. So I'm pruning my um, squash. Oh, a monarch. Oh, look. Oh, look. Look at that. I think it's a monarch. That's a bunch of mint I have there and it's flowering now. Oh, so pretty. So pretty. But the only flowers I have. They're not even flowers. I don't know what those things are, but anyway. So, I'm out here pruning my squash, my summer squash. Doing the best I can. I have a lot planted right now, and I need to probably plant some um, uh, makeup ones just in case something happens. I haven't had, luckily, knock on wood, a whole lot of squash vine borers yet, but it's only the beginning of July, um, and they'll be coming out really soon. So, I'm trying something a little different this year. Let me show you. So the first thing I'm doing, ooh, let's unzoom that. The first thing I'm doing is I'm trying to stake a lot of them up. I'm not gonna say all of them because it's not gonna happen. But I don't know if you can see in here, there's a green stake, oh, leaves in the way, a green stake, that dark green going up. And I've actually used a Velcro piece right there to connect it to the stake. So they're kind of being, um, trellised upwards now again like i said not all of them because that one over there does not have it done but the one next to it actually does they're kind of almost connected so that is supposed to do a couple things it's supposed to um help keep the bugs from just crawling on it and making their way into any anywhere because if it's all laying on the ground they can just chew into the side of a stem um and get in uh or the bottom so what you also see is all that dust i'm putting some demaceous earth down uh, now that will kill any soft-bodied organism. Um, you can also use like lime or Saturday night, Saturday lime. Uh, I just have, I actually have both, but I'm using the Demetrius Earth. But you want to make sure you don't get it near the flowers. So I have the flower there, um, some unopened flowers, and just doing it around the uh, bottom. I just broke off like these two or three, I can't remember. And then what I also did, I broke those off, and then I put some Demetrius Earth around the edge of them so that uh, none of those critters want to crawl up in there and try to make their way in. So we'll see how it works so far. Um, I mean, it is what it is. So I'm just going around and trying to get the biggest bottom leaves off. I just moved this way. So I'm going to, one for airflow. So uh, when you break, take the leaves off, you're allowing more air to get in. Um, to your plants more sunlight for anything you have underneath like I just found on this side a baby nasturtium these two little nasturtium I forgot I planted them but they had no sunlight because there was these big leaves covering them up so I got those guys off to help them out as well but um oh also when you do this you want to make sure you're checking underneath everyone says all your leaves there's no way I'm checking under all these leaves but I check under a good amount of them and look for the little orange eggs. Sometimes they're on top, but usually they're on the bottom if they're gonna lay them here. Um, and then what I'm doing after I break off some pieces, again, I can't really tell right now what you can see. Just kind of holding it up a little bit. Now, is this one connected? Not yet, so I'm actually gonna get something connected to that red pole. I don't know if you see the red pole. It's a red pole back there. But see how I just broke that off there? Um, let me go get my tripod. Okay, so this is very exciting. If you know what that is, that is a green stalk. I have wanted one for about two years. And I finally went and bought one. And then I bought a second one. Because <laughs> they came out with blue. And I love blue. So I put this together the other night. Um, super humid night. They're cool. They're on sale right now. It's our 10 year anniversary. Um, we're gonna see. I'm excited to be able to. I have no lettuces or anything planted right now because it's just. I, I haven't because um, I don't know where to put them because of everything that's going on. So I'm actually gonna probably plant some lettuces in here. But right now I have like three peppers on the bottom that are very small. We'll see if they actually grow. I'm gonna get a couple more today. Um, some lemon basil, some leeks, uh, some purple sage. Rosemary. These were these two were in pots before. I had just started these in pots. Um, I planted some parsley in these empty spots here. This is another um, 
purple sage that was at school and just was dying, so I brought it here. We'll see if it comes back. Some more lemon basil is my favorite. I didn't have any in my garden, and I really need to make my tea soon, so I really need that to start growing. So hopefully that'll take off. Um, if you don't know anything about green stalks, uh, what happens is it has a reservoir up here. You put the water in there. It flows down from the top. Ah. And under each um, like base level, I don't know if you can see that little gray. I mean, there's no plants. That little gray um, little disc there. It actually holds the water and then it spits like it drips it out slowly into all the sections. And there's one in every every one of those sections has it all the way down to the bottom. And so everything gets watered. It did actually rain a little bit last night, so it got watered that way as well. But it's an easy way to make sure everything gets watered. You fill the reservoir, we let it go out. All the extra runs out the bottom. Um, I don't have anything at the top because I, have, I don't have enough dirt in there yet. I have to get more potting soil. So I'm excited to see how this works. And my new one, like I said, I got two. I got that one first. It's like maple. It's a color. I think it was like a, um, what's it called? They used a uh, limited edition color. And then they came out with blueberry like two weeks later. And I love blue. So I got it. So I'm waiting for that one to come in. That's so where I can set that up. And um, I'm excited to start my adventure with green stalk. Okay. Uh, so like I said, is I use these velcro strips, and these are actually ones from last year. And what's cool about these is that, well, one, they're reusable, probably up to two or three years. Eventually some of them get really cruddy, and you can't use them forever. But also, um, what's neat is that, so like, these aren't very long um, for squash, you know how big a squash vine can be. These aren't going to fit around a squash vine, but what I can do is... That's right, and stick it for me. I can actually make them... Um, I can connect them because they're pretty strong and make it bigger and hopefully that'll be enough we'll see in one second hopefully this will work um it look like i've got a leaf from another one in here i might actually see if i can sand them both up to this one but this one is a lot bigger on the left ah. i need a longer piece <laughs> So I'm actually going to take a longer piece I have and connect it to the longish piece I had. You can see it's longer now. I try to be gentle when I'm doing this because I don't know if you can see there's a lot of little flower buds in there getting started. So I don't want to trap any of them. So I don't even know what, which squash this is. I don't know if this is a patty pan squash. I am not sure what kind of squash this one is. Um, it hasn't produced anything yet. Alright, and so now it's pulled up off the ground here. Um, hopefully it'll hold. I don't think I started talking to do it. There we go. And then I'm taking my Denacious Earth. <laughs> this is like my favorite new tool here. 
Let me show you. This is a seed thing. You're supposed to be able to put seeds in around with it. I can't. I just use my fingers. But I thought maybe it would help me. But it is. I wish it was like a mini or a hurry knife. I just put it in the bag, a little delicious earth. Since it's so thin, I can make sure I only put it where I want it, which is right at the base of the plant. So that, see how I put it on the opening here? They want to crawl up in there. They're going to be met with the powder of death. <laughs> Dimatious earth is organic, so it's safe. I just keep getting little amounts. Just sprinkling it around. Uh, I'm not going to pull that other one up right now. Is this worth it? I guess we'll find out. I've done the foil method. Eh, didn't really work great. So, as a gardener, you're always down to try something new. This is my something new for 2024. So I just said I wish this was like a hori hori knife where it had like a um, sharp edge on it because I mean it works without the sharp edge but like right here I can like I'm using the tip of it to break it this piece off if I had an edge it would just cut it right off nice and smooth but it doesn't so I kind of punch my way through oh. um Oh, this one I, no, I didn't even start this one. It just kind of fell over. All right, Let's see if I can get that up. Surgery. All right, so I got them up for the most part. I'm hot. It's like 80, 90% humidity out here. It's ridiculous. These two, I believe, are Kuzakelli, Kokozelli, Co Kokozelli squash, which are somewhat squash vine vor, bore um that's the word i'm looking for uh resistant because they can vine so i maybe shouldn't have uh, um tied them up because if you see right here they're starting to produce more roots so if somehow they did get attacked by squash vine bores the, the remainder of the plant as it's growing roots in the ground um to keep the plant going and also uh, most squash don't do that so I am rethinking what I just did because they were kind of trailing uh they were just trailing in everyone else's way and I don't know I don't know what type ouch, I don't know what type this is I don't think it's the same I don't think it's a cocozelli um and since none of them have produced fruit yet I really can't even say for sure uh but these are two also, you know, you always plant two seeds. But I can never thin after I do that. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's the first little fruit right there. Like it's trying to form. I guess we'll find out. Trial and error. It's the first year I planted Cocozelli. And I got them specifically because of that. But I wasn't thinking about it when I was out here doing this right now. So, uh, like I said, I'm probably going to plant some more because I have this space over here. Um opposite of where this is one of the beds the garlic was in garlic came out a week or so ago in a lovely thunderstorm um which is not when you're supposed to remove your garlic when it's wet uh, so luckily it wasn't wet we put a tent over it and i got these out the day after the storm over there we were pulling them out like mad people um as we saw the storm coming toward us got most of it out before it rained um but I planted sweet potatoes over here. So I was going to plant them in garden one. I mentioned in a previous video way over there. But then I realized it was too shady. Um, so I planted regular potatoes in garden one in that area. They don't. I took the um, cattle panel out. Brought it over here. Planted the sweet potatoes here. Because this is usually in the sun all day. And sweet potatoes like the sun. So there's eight of a purple Japanese sweet potato on that end. There's, I think, four or five Beauregards over here. I think that's what it's called. I don't remember. And another sweet potato over here, like two or three plants. I do have some tomato plants in here I'm going to pull. 
um, out because I don't want them impeding on my sweet potatoes growth because I have enough tomatoes. I think I wanted to find out what kind these were. And by looking at them, they're those yellow pear things I had last year, which I absolutely did not like. So no problem pulling that out. I'm just gonna pull these out because they're probably all the same thing. I didn't like them so much that we actually just let them die on the vine. All right, all clear. Almost. Since there's nothing over here, I don't mind stepping in the bed. Oh God. So, sweet potato bed on the go. Uh, check and see what that one is. There's no fruit on that tomato plant over there yet, so I don't know what that one is. I had like Paul Robinson's over there on that side, so that could be a Paul Robinson, so I'm kind of waiting to see. So I think I'm going to get all the weeds out of here, and I'll probably, I don't know if I'll do it at the end of this week. I'm not gonna do it now. I'll probably do it at the end of the week. I'll drop um, some squash, another Coco Zelly in here, maybe see if I let it go and some patty pans. I think one of these is patty pans. I really wanted the patty pans. I, I actually, I know one or two of these has to be patty pans. So just waiting for them to start producing their fruit and we'll see what we have going there. So there's tons of pollinators on the uh, cucumbers over here. Exciting, last year I got zilch. This year I have tons of plants. Sorry, it's all mother made a vine. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, I'll look in a minute. But this is another zucchini plant. I actually bought this as a start. It starts with a C. They all start with stinking C's, but it's like co Cosella or co Cocosa. I don't know. But I've gotten like three or four off of those already. They're big and green striped, so they're doing well. I'm not sure what's happening already here. It's like rust. It's some disease. I got it before and it like killed my plant super fast and it's moving really fast again fruit um so i don't know what to do i think i have to oh, i have to look it up spray um some phosphate i think it's called i can't remember i'm not gonna lie look a bee and a cucumber beetle hanging out together Ooh, he slapped them <laughs> So, I don't know, I'm going, to spend, I'm going to need to plant, as usual, as, as you should do, some more cucumbers. I already have some seeds started at school that I did with my kids that I'm going to bring here. Um, there are some cucumber plants that are not susceptible, susceptible to rust and disease. I think I planted one of those at school. Do not remember the name of it, but I'll be bringing it here, and I just broke that. But hopefully, some of this fruit that's starting won't be able to produce before the plant decides to succumb to whatever the heck it has. So if you know what it is, tell me. Um, yeah, look at that. It's so sad. Yeah, these are like my lemon cucumbers over here. And they were green yesterday. And now they look like this. Well, help me figure it out. First blush tomato over here. Don't know what kind these are. Not a peach, sadly. Um, I thought these were peach. They are not. Oh, well, this one. These. I don't know. They're not peach. I don't know what these are. Hopefully it's one that I liked. <laughs> so I let them grow there. Um, super far behind on my winter squash. I need to come over here and put some Demetrius earth around the bottom of them. Um, some acorn squash down here. Not acorn, butternut squash, which is resistant to squash vine borers. Um, but then I've got all the other ones over here, which some look like they need attention. Some don't. So I'm going to take care of that. And then we'll move on. Uh, another real quick first first couple black uh, tomatoes. These are all supposed to be black tomatoes. Well, this, these three at least, I believe. I think that one was supposed to be a black tomato too, but it looks like a cherry tomato, which of some sort. Um, but none of the other ones look like they're going black. 
or they're not starting out black. Maybe that one starts out black. It's my first time doing uh, planting black tomatoes, so I guess we'll just have to live and learn and see what happens. Um, these ones are cherry, chocolate cherry, right here. So that's exciting. There's a ton of those. Um, yeah, so tomatoes are getting there. A whole lot of little babies. I mean, they're not little babies, but you know, they're babies. And I got some onions starting to bulb right in here. So that's good. And over here, I literally just uncovered them. I thought, I didn't realize they weren't uncovered yet. So they really they appreciated that, I guess. All right. I'm going to quick put the Demetrius Earth on these winter squash and take my nasty, sweaty, gross self inside and uh, see if I can figure out what's up with those cucumbers. But thanks for joining me, and we'll see you later at Squeenie Central. Have a blessed day. Bye.